Yo, what's up, science class fam? Here we go. It's time for us to record some notes about gravity. Let's drop it. No pun intended. Actually, pun intended there. So on your uh, science notebook, we need to make a gravity page. So you're going to want that title up at the top. Um, and then we're going to make sure that you uh, define gravity. I'll give you that definition. We're going to talk about some qualities about gravity, some patterns that we see. We're going to quantify or figure out the amount of acceleration that gravity um, creates here on planet Earth. And then we'll also kind of relate back to physics and see how force is related to gravity. So let's jump in. So y'all just finished the ring around gravity um, science experiment. And what you should have noticed is that if we have a golf ball in the middle, if we were to draw a diagram of a side angle view of this um, system here, the golf ball being in the middle would have um, caused less of a dent in our piece of um, elastic than let's say if you put a rock in the middle. So that's because the rock has more mass than the golf ball does, so therefore it bends that piece of elastic. Now the piece of elastic actually represents something that we call the space-time continuum. and. Um, Albert Einstein thought it was important to actually call this space-time as one thing because you can't really ever be in one space and you can't really uh, talk about where things are based on the time, but it takes both of them. It's like um, space represents where you are and the time represents when you were there. So space-time is the most appropriate way to talk about space and how gravity actually warps this um, space and time. Because if you want to say like, oh, I went to the mall. well you might have been at the mall and that would be your space, but when you were there would be important because if I was there on Tuesday and you were there Wednesday, we probably didn't see each other, even though we were at the same space or the same location. So in order to really quantify where things are in space and um, what's happening, we need to talk about this in the space-time continuum. So your piece of elastic represented that exact thing. So more mass bends the space-time continuum more than something that has less mass. So let's jump into our definition of gravity then. So, um, gravity is a force which causes two massive, has to be very, very massive in order to bend space, but it's a force which causes two massive bodies, like planets and moons or suns or stars, to be attracted. Attracted to one another. And so, something important here is that gravity is a force of attraction. It brings things together. Um, it does not push things apart like some other forces um, have the capability of doing. For example, magnets can push each other apart, but gravity is only an attractive force. So, as we're discussing, if um, we had a golf ball and a rock on the space time continuum, they bend space differently. And so, if we look at the difference between how Earth bends space and how the Sun bends space, um, what we can see is that if we increase the mass of the object, then we increase the force of gravity, meaning that's going to bend space time more. And if we decrease the mass, it's going to decrease the force of gravity. Now, a good example of this is the Earth and the Moon, because the Moon orbits around the Earth because of the Earth's gravity. But actually, the Moon is big enough that it actually causes some changes here on Earth. And maybe you've heard about this before, but if this dashed line were the Earth, um, the Moon actually causes there to be a pole on the water here on Earth. So if you look, if you're able to see this in an over-exaggerated model, this purple spot here would be the water. The water is actually pulled closer towards the moon um, in certain situations, and um, it's not pulled here on the sides. And so the extra water then also pools on the other side of the Earth. So it ends up making this elliptical shape, and that's because of the uh, pull of gravity from the moon and how the moon actually impacts the Earth. If you want to learn more about that, check out the Sci Flicks on the Explore page on the Sci-Hub uh, to learn more about how the Earth and the Moon interact in terms of tides. So again, if you increase the mass, you increase the force of gravity, and if you decrease mass, you decrease the force of gravity. Now what this means is that this is what something that we call a proportional relationship. So it's proportional because if you increase mass, you increase force. If you decrease mass, you decrease force. So therefore, we have a proportional relationship between mass and gravity. 
Now let's take a look at something a little different. In this situation, um, we're going to change the distance. So for example, Mercury is a different distance from the sun than Venus. And Venus is a different distance from the sun than Earth. And Earth is a different distance than Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So as the planets, as you go further away from the sun, we are going to analyze and look at how gravity is affected um, in this scenario. And you might have noticed this um, when you were doing your ring around gravity experiment. When you had the mass in the middle, and then you sent an object into orbit, you might have noticed that first it might have went slower as it was further out, but as it got closer, it started to speed up faster and faster as it got closer and closer to that middle mass. So what, we've, what we can learn from gravity is that if we increase the distance, so if we increase the distance from the mass, here it's the sun, then we end up decreasing the force of gravity. So gravity from the sun does not impact Neptune as much as it impacts Venus. It also does not impact Saturn as much as it impacts Mercury. So what that means then is if we decrease the distance from the mass or we get closer to it, then we increase the force of gravity. So the closer you get to a massive object, the more of a force of gravity you will have. As you increase your distance, you will remove the force of gravity. Now we can see this here on planet Earth, that here on, the, on planet Earth, we have a very strong gravitational pull. But if you go all the way out to the moon, people aren't sucked off the moon and pulled to the Earth because of the Earth's gravity. The Earth's gravity is there and it's keeping the moon in, the, in orbit around the Earth, but it wouldn't just pluck like a human off of the face of the of the moon because it's so strong and that's because we end up decreasing our distance from the mass which would be the earth all right so there's actually a way that we can calculate this and the way that we calculate this is um as we watched in class you if we dropped a feather and a bowling ball at the same time in a vacuum sealed container the two objects would fall at the same exact rate and that rate is something that we call the acceleration due to gravity and we can calculate this. This has been calculated before. And the value for the acceleration due to gravity is the magic 9.80665 meters per second squared. Or you can round that to just 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, well, if everything falls at the same rate, that's a really interesting idea. Now, sometimes things don't fall at the exact same time or at the exact same rate, and that has a lot to do with if it's falling due to gravity, sometimes there is more air resistance than there is in other situations. So, for example, this could maybe be an airplane. There's more upward force and there's downward force. And this one here could be maybe a rock, and if we then, um, and so maybe we need to increase the force of gravity here on these. So if there's more upward force, this could be like um, dropping a piece of paper. This one could be dropping a ball. And this one here could be um, maybe dropping a feather where it's almost the exact same. So there's always an upward force. So sometimes things fall at different rates based on air friction. But regardless, if we take this acceleration due to gravity, this number here is actually the value for G. So what that means is everything falls at the same rate, but something that impacts their force, and the F here stands for force, the force of impact is related to the gravitational acceleration, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, times its mass. So what that means then is that if you have an increase in mass, then you increase the force when it hits the ground. Because if you increase this number right here, when you multiply it times G, it's going to end up being a bigger number. If you decrease the mass, this number right here, you multiply it times g, it would be a smaller number than a bigger mass. So even though you increase the mass, you increase the force when it hits the ground, but something that's important is that all objects fall or are pulled to the earth by gravity at the exact same rate. And that is due to gravity. So um, there you have it. This is our introduction um, to gravity and um, if you want to know a little bit more, stick around and I'd love to dig in just a little bit deeper here on this idea of gravity. See ya.